St. Michael's Church. St. Michael's Church is a 330-year-old building, sitting on a site that's almost 600 years older. It is built directly on top of a number of huge 500-year-old burial vaults. These vaults are still full of corpses, stacked in coffins, and eerily well preserved. Some of the coffins have crumbled, while others have collapsed into piles where corpse limbs are sticking out from a mound of broken wood. Some are even completely open, revealing the mummy-like figures within. Eerie as they may seem, the burial vaults of St. Michael's are a popular tourist attraction. Many visitors have reported feeling a strange presence, as if there was a pressure of living people all around them. The vaults are also filled with a strange murmuring noise, as if many people were whispering just far enough away, that you can't quite make out the words. All of this creates a truly unique, and creepy experience, that makes it difficult to think that, ghosts don't exist especially for the many visitors who have been touched by icy, spectral fingers during their visit. Dabur Chu most countries have at least one mythical monster lurking in their waters or forests, and Ireland is no exception. In fact, the whole island is littered with legendary beasts, and cryptids, but possibly the most impressive of them all is Dabur Chu. It's often thought to be a sort of Irish version of the Loch Ness Monster, but Dabur Chu is actually almost the polar opposite of Nessie, where the latter is a more or less peaceful theoretical Scottish plesiosaur. The former is a bloodthirsty, crocodile-sized beast, with an appetite for human flesh. Dabachu is said to look like a combination of a wolfhound, and a fish, and in fact, its name translates to water hound. It is extremely fast, and agile both in and out of water, always ready to attack the unwary. Dabachu live in small populations, and may be migratory, so their hypothetical numbers are unknown. Equally mysterious is their true appearance. Although they're generally reported as ugly, dark, and dangerous fish monsters, some sources present them as aquatic mammals that look a bit like massive otters. The latter version is supported by the Dabachu's reputation as the father of all otters. Although Dabachu is clearly a cryptid, and its existence is debatable, it is worth noting that attacks and sightings have consistently been reported for centuries from the earliest written documents dating all the way back to the early 18th century to the most recent ones in 2000. What's more, some have pointed out that, it's possible migratory nature could link it to similar lake monsters, such as the one, that attacked swimmers in Canada's Port Dover in 2001, and the famous Bessie of Lake Erie in the US. Malahide Castle any 800-year-old castle with a bloody history is bound to have at least one ghost wandering around. Dublin's Malahide Castle is no exception. In fact, Malahide is famous, for no fewer than five resident ghosts. The spectral Lord Galdram, who died violently on his wedding day in the 15th century, after which his bride married his biggest rival, is said to wander the castle grounds at night, groaning from the pain of heartbreak and spear wounds alike, the beautiful, anonymous white lady in a large painting in the main hall, has been reported to leave her painting to walk the corridors at night. Another lady, Maud Plunkett, roams the same corridors, forever chasing her husband's unseen ghost. A ruthless lord called Miles Corbett is sometimes seen as an imposing armored soldier, who suddenly breaks into pieces. The most interesting of the castle's ghosts is Puck, a small, reclusive jester, who was a caretaker of the castle, during the rule of Henry VIII. There are at least two variations of his legend, some say his lover was taken away, and he was found stabbed through the heart, while others claim he hanged himself, for seemingly no reason at all. In both versions of the story, Puck vowed to haunt, and protect the castle after his death. Many are certain that he kept his promise, as the small caretaker has made numerous appearances throughout the years. His most regular haunt appears to be Puck's staircase, the stairway to the turret, where he used to live. It is said he also appears in many photos taken by the tourists. Even exterior shots sometimes show his impish features, in the ivy of the castle's walls. 
the black cat of Kiliki. Many large houses have cats roaming around the grounds, hunting rats, and doing whatever it is cats do all day. The Kiliki house in Dublin was particularly unfortunate in this respect, because the cat stalking its halls and grounds was clearly supernatural, if it was an animal at all. The black cat of Kiliki is an old, legendary creature, that has reportedly been sighted in the area for centuries. However, its legend really sprung to life in 1968, when a young couple bought the run-down Kiliki house, and started renovating it. The workers soon reported strange sounds and eerie events, which culminated when a huge black cat with glowing demon eyes started haunting them. The animal appeared, and vanished in the blink of an eye, and scared the workers greatly. The lady of the house first thought the workmen were merely superstitious, but soon, she and her husband started encountering the beast as well. The black cat appeared in hallways, and areas with clearly locked doors, staring and snarling at frightened witnesses. Before long, an exorcism was performed in the premises. This took care of the cat at least, for a few months. An unwitting seance held by a group of actors not only brought the black cat back, but also caused the house to be haunted by a pair of ghostly nuns. The Moving Virgin Mary of Valinspital There are many Virgin Mary statues, that are said to have mysterious properties. However, most of them are limited to crying or bleeding. In 1985, a particular Irish statue of the Holy Mother showed some special abilities stronger than that, it started moving. The moving Virgin Mary statue of Billingspittle was first witnessed by a retired police sergeant, who saw it begin levitating in the grotto of the church. At first, he didn't believe his own eyes after all. The statue was solid concrete, but after inspecting it the following day and realizing there was no chance of foul play, he became convinced that, he had witnessed a miraculous event. The legend of the statue started spreading, and others started claiming they had also seen it move. Of course, the phenomenon was, and still is widely disputed. Scientists have written the statue's abilities off as an optical illusion, and even the Irish Catholic Church doubts the story. Despite all this, believers in the phenomenon stand by their claims. Some say, they can still see the statue move sometimes, 